Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Priscilla. Uh, in this video, I am going to be continuing with the lab setup for the SCCM installation. And what we're gonna be doing specifically is the IP configurations for uh, each of our servers, as well as the remote access setup, sorry, <laughs> the remote access setup um, that's going to allow us to do the network address translation for our virtual network. Um, so that's gonna, allow our internal clients uh, to connect to the internet using only one public IP address. So it's gonna be really cool. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, all right, let's get to it. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is go to our DHCP server. And uh, I have it running, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it up. I'm gonna close out of there. And then um, let me just check something. Real quick. All right, so just wanted to check if we have internet and we don't have internet on this machine. All right, so I'm gonna go to local server. I'm gonna wait for this to load. And then I'm gonna select ethernet. So this is our DHCP slash NAT server. So we have two network cards. The first one's gonna be our external one, which we're gonna get our internet from. And then the other one is gonna be our private one. Um, so sorry, I'm clicking on this by accident. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and change the name for this one. We're not going to do any IP configurations on this one because we already have our public IP that we're getting from our external Ethernet card or network card. But let me go ahead and rename this to um, external. And then I'm going to rename the second one to private. And this one, we are going to make some changes to the IP. We're going to select it. So properties, we're going to select uh, IP version 4 properties. And then we're going to use the following IP address, which is going to be um, following the IP scheme that I mentioned in my previous videos. So this one is going to be, let me just tab over to the right place. 192, whoops, 192.168.1.1. Whoops. Okay, let me get back there. Dot one, okay, and then we have the subnet mask 255.255.255, and then our DNS server is going to be our domain controller, which is going to be 192.168.1.2. So it's going to be our domain controller slash DNS server, and that's what it's going to point to. So I'm going to put OK. Um, and then we're going to close this. Close that. Close out of there. So the next thing we're going to do is change our computer name. So we're going to select here, and then we're going to select change. And we're going to change this to uh, DHCP. And we're going to put OK. And we're going to have to restart the machine. So it'll prompt us to do that. OK, so let's close out of all of the things, all of the windows, I mean, <laughs> and then uh, go ahead and restart it. All right, so then we're going to move on to our domain controller. And we're going to change the IP configurations on there. So we'll go to local server, wait for the Ethernet to pop up. And then select that one. And we're going to change the name to private on this one as well, just for consistency. And we'll select it. We'll go to properties, IP version 4, properties. Use the following IP address. So this one's going to be um, the 192. I keep tabbing over. The wrong one, <laughs> wrong place. Um, okay, so 192.168.1.2, cause it's also our DNS server. Uh, so that's subnet mask 255.255.255. Our default gateway is gonna be pointing to our, <clears throat> to our DHCP server slash net server. So 192.168.1.2, I mean dot one, I'm sorry. And then our DNS server for this one, I'm gonna use Google's. Um, so I'm gonna do 8.8.8.8.8.8.8.8. But okay, close it, close it, close it. We'll change the computer name on this one as well. Uh, but yes, go back on here. And this one, it's, I'll change the name here first. So I'll do domain controller. Uh, 
um, it's funny because I'm narrating this. I did this before and I'm just narrating it. So it's just the thought process that I had when I was actually doing it. I don't know what I was thinking, but um, I eventually just ended up going with domain controller anyway. So I'm just going to wait for me to type it out. Domain controller. Then we're going to go and select change. And I'm going to, um, I'm actually just going to switch it to DC. So I'm gonna, let's erase that right now and enter DC, and then we're just gonna hit OK. And we're gonna restart it now. So close all the windows so we can go ahead and restart. And now we're gonna go to our SCCM server. And this one, we're gonna do the same thing. Gonna go, let me close out of this window. Right now, what am I doing? Now I'm going to close out of this window. I'm going to go to local server. And then um, I'm going to go and go into the Ethernet once it loads. So IP version 4. I'm going to rename it to private. And then we're going to do properties. IP version 4, properties. And then we're going to use the following IP address, which is going to be 192. Tabbing over the mistake. <laughs> 192, once I find the right place, 192.168.1.3. Um, dot three with that subnet mask. And then the default gateway is going to be our DHCP slash NAT server, which is 192.168.1.1. And then our DNS server is going to be our domain controller slash DNS server, 192.168.1.2. So that's all good to go. We're going to go ahead and uh, select OK. And then close out all of these windows. And then we're going to change our computer name on this one as well. But yes, there. So we're going to do SCCM for this one. Keep it simple, you know. Change, SCCM, OK, OK, to restart, because it's going to make it restart. OK. And then we're going to close out of everything so we could go ahead and restart it. All right, so those are done. And the next thing that we're going to do, so we're gonna to go to our DHCP server now. All right, so now in our DHCP server, we're gonna go um, add the remote access um, feature. So we're going to go to, all right, so now we're in our DHCP server, we're gonna do the remote access part of this. Um, so we're going to go um, to, Manage, and then we're going to do Add Roles and Features. So we're going to do Next, because uh, we don't need to do anything on this page. We're going to do Next, and uh, right in a second, Next. That's all good. And then we're going to find Remote Access. So we find it, select it, and then we're going to wait for that to load and select next. And then we're not gonna uh, select anything from here. I'm not adding any features. So we're gonna select next, next. Um, and then we're gonna uh, select direct access and VPN, add those features, as well as routing. So select that one, select routing, and then we're gonna select next. And next, next, because uh, we don't need to do anything else here. And then we're going to just go ahead and install it. And I'm going to speed through this using the editing. So I'm going to go ahead and select install in a second. OK, so that's going to install. I'm just going to speed through it. And then we're going to go to tools. Um, routing and remote access. And then we're going to right click DHCP and configure and enable routing and remote access. We're going to select next. We're going to do network address translations. So this, this is going to allow the internal clients to connect to the internet using one public IP address. So that's where we're using our DHCP slash NAT server to give um, internet to the rest of the machines on our network. Um, when you do this, it might not load at first, so it's okay if you go back and then go back in there, but you'll select that one, you'll select next, and you'll select finish. 
Um, I hope that made sense. If it didn't, let me know. Uh, so that's going to load. All right, so we're done with our um, setting up our remote, routing our remote access to do the network address translation or the NAT for our DHCP slash NAT server. Um, we did all of the IP configurations for our servers. Uh, in the next video, we're going to be adding Active Directory and then creating our domain. So that one's going to be pretty cool. Uh, stay tuned for that one. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comment section. If you want to go ahead and like the video, you can, you can do that too. If you want to subscribe to um, watch the rest of my videos or stay tuned for the rest of the videos I have coming up. Um, but yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, all right, have a good one. Bye.